Hello, Internet, and welcome to another Tadpog podcast, a show that happens twice a week where two old guys talk about old games. Wait, wait, hold, wait, hold up, hold up. We're not I doing. A, I got a story. We're not doing. We're not doing Tadpog. This isn't. This isn't Tadpog podcast. This is. This is two dudes in an ass. We're not even on that show. No, no, we're not. But we're doing a promo that we're introducing their show, and we're going to plug our show in the process. So it works out. It works out for them because they get. They get us doing what we do, and then we get all their listeners. They promise that all of their listeners will start listening to our show. That's pretty f-ing good. It's pretty That's good. It's pretty, pretty f-ing good. Yeah, yeah. We, we oh. definitely want all their oh. listeners. Yes. Hey, man. You know, we've been friends for a long time, rather, haven't we? Yeah. Like like 15 years, maybe? Maybe more? Uh, yeah, I'd say a little more, actually, yeah. Yeah. Okay, if I asked you to tell me one game that we, quote-unquote, wasted more of our time <laughs> on, one NES game that you and I, over these 15 to 20 years, have absolutely wasted our time on, what game would that be? Well, without a doubt, that would be Jaws. Close. It's actually uh, scuba stew shoots fish and bombs jellyfish. Okay. Yeah. Scuba stew. No. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, scuba Steve. It's overrated. Scuba Steve. Okay. It's overused. Okay. It's overused. All but right. yes, Jaws. Jaws is the game of the day. We yeah. it's, we have just you and I for some reason we're obsessed with Jaws. Mm-hmm. In like middle school high school days and on into college and we just right i think our obsession over it was the fact that we couldn't beat it yeah embarrassingly enough um of course you know a little disclaimer when we were in high school the internet was not what it is today not yeah. there wasn't so much out there about information about games. i did not even have the internet when i was in high school yeah i think well i think it was dial up at the time I had dial up. It was AOL. Yeah, sweet. Um, not to. Uh, they're not an official sponsor of this show. Just uh, want to throw that out there. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I had AOL. But, but they I could be. Think... AOL, yeah, you sure. could be. Sure, I think if you're still around. Company. I don't know if you want them around. No. But anyway, um, so yeah, we didn't have the resources that we could have today, and certainly this past week has just been really an agonizing week for me because early in the week you found some some links to some sites that show you what you need to do and it really shows that this game's actually pretty easy yeah well we can get to that in the game discussion yeah yeah why don't you go ahead and give us some history justin's historical tidbits and trivia although whenever i think of tidbits because we went to do Tadpog Tidbits. Right. Where it was just be a two-minute thing where we I, talk about... I thought it was a minute-long podcast, Tidbits. Well, that, well, I guess that works, too. I was just a minute a minute to two minutes where we just talk about our junk on Facebook. And it's Tadpog Tidbits. All right. All right. Well, before I get started in history, I got a little tangent that I want to go on to. Uh, I was reading this past week, uh, Rolling Stone did, uh, top 20 comedy podcasts today. We're on it? No, that's oh. the, that's, that's what I'm going to complain about, because we're not on it. We got skipped over. Uh, but you know, I, these lists, I, I don't understand these lists. It's, it's crazy. Like... And, you know, the number one was WTF with Mark Marin, which I think is actually a pretty funny podcast. Uh, for those of you, you know, maybe you've listened to that. It's, it's not a family friendly podcast at all. But, um, you know, and then but most of them, like, I didn't even know, like, I never heard of them. And I, I scanned the podcast world quite a bit, especially the comedies. And I was like, I, I've never heard of these. Who makes these lists? And it made me think about, like the Nintendo Power Awards that we always talk about, like mm-hmm. who are who are making these lists? Like, I know it's hard. You can always argue about like, 
you know, when, when you're trying to quantitate, uh, or when you're trying to make, uh, something that's so subjective, uh, but, you know, like the Nintendo Power, we were talking about Contra last week, didn't even involve Contra in their nominations. Anyway, insane. Let's talk about History of Jaws. Um, so History of Jaws was, Jaws was made at, by a company called LGN, Toys mm. Limited. And... Sorry, that was my afraid noise. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, LGN was notorious for making bad stuff. Uh, I don't know. I don't understand. Uh, they were actually bought out in 1995 by Acclaim. Uh, maybe Acclaim was just like, okay, you guys got to stop this stuff. But not only was LGN famous for making bad games, they were also famous because they got a lot of uh, contracts to do the game. Like, uh, a lot of famous games that were built based off movies. So just to talk about some of those, not only was it Jaws that came out in 1987, they came out with the Karate Kid game, Back to the Future, uh, Back to the Future 2 and 3, Nightmare on Elm Street, Aliens 3, Beetlejuice. They, they made all these games. Uh, Friday the 13th, um, The Incredible Crash Test Dummies. They also got a lot of like uh, comic book licenses too. Like they got mm-hmm. uh, Spider Man and yeah. X Men. Yeah, they got Spider Man, Terminator Two, um, and it's like none of these games were really like really good. And it was almost like they were get, they were buying or they were getting the the rights to do the games, but maybe they were just hurrying them through. Uh, we talked about that with uh, Ghostbusters. In one of the really early episodes, it's like when you 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 take a game and you're modeling it after something. And you just maybe they're just rushing through it just to try to get it out there to try to make money, which I understand, but uh, it doesn't really add up well as far as a legacy goes. Uh, yeah, I'd say they probably made a lot of money though. Oh yeah, I'm sure they did. Uh, I'm sure this game alone, Jaws made a lot of money because if you think about it it sounds like a great idea for a video game like oh man jaws that sounds like an awesome game uh but really jaws wasn't really definitely wasn't critically acclaimed although me and you spent a lot of time playing it i don't know if we count for uh majority we're critic of... we're critics now right we got a podcast yeah we're critics but uh uh i don't know if everybody spent the amount of time that we certainly spent on this game um, so it was actually a subcontracted out through LGN. LGN was the publisher and they released the game, but it was subcontracted out through a company called Westone Bit Entertainment. Uh, and, um, they went along with a company called Atlas. Atlas is mainly works on, uh, Sega games now. Yeah, so, Atlas uh, makes some really good games nowadays. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know what involvement Atlas had in this game. I don't know if, I don't think it was a lot, because they were, uh, they were just a subcontractor on this game. So, um, whether they had a big influence on anything, I don't know. One thing I did want to talk about that I do like about this game a lot is the music. The, I thought the music is really good for this game. And they didn't really use a lot of the music from the movie, other than like the title screen music. Um, which is obviously the iconic music from the, uh, uh, movie. But, uh, this, this guy Shinichi Sakamoto, who is, uh, the composer that did this game, he's done several games actually. And, um, just to kind of read a little tidbit about that, uh, this is actually from that book, Maestro, Maestro Mario, that we mm-hmm. talked about, um, on another, in another game. Um, and the quote from the book is in Jaws 1987 the overwater music sways from soft to loud and loud to soft rocking back and forth like the un- undulating waves of a shark infested ocean which I didn't never thought I never thought about that until I read that but you know it's kind of like it, they, it did kind of remember how the music would go from soft to loud to kind of when you were swimming in the water Mm-hmm. And it kind of gives that 
um, that that feeling. But uh, composer uh, does not, you know, he did not want to make explicit reference to uh, a lot of John Williams' work from the, the actual movie. So um, the only parts that were obviously the title screen and uh, the uh, "You've Hit Something" music, which features the, <laughs> the the movie's characteristic oscillating minor second. But um, that's really about it on a, as far as history. There's not a lot wrote about this game, and you know you got to think about it in this in this aspect when we're talking about like Metroid or Contra. Those games are so famous that there's a lot of stuff that's that's written about it. You know, they're so well loved. You know, right? They're so there's you know people want to read about this. In this game, I guess there's just not a lot of people that are interested in how this game is formed because not a lot of people were playing this game. So. Well, I mean, this game is about a shark movie that features a shark for all of maybe 15 minutes of the movie. Right. You know, I mean, Jaws. Jaws is not. A, I mean, it's. A, I love Jaws the movie, mm-hmm. but it's not really an action-packed sh- shooting a shark movie like the game is. I mean, they kind of had to. Yeah. They had to make this game, and they had to take a lot of interpretation mm-hmm. in order to make it into a game. Because otherwise, it would just be you're a guy who's politicking to get a beach clothes because there's a killer shark out there. You know. Yeah, yeah. It. it I guess it. It could have been an RPG. Yeah. It was like that. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, I, I don't know. It, yeah, and I don't know. Even the biggest of sharks, I don't know if they could take like hundreds of harpoons to their face yeah. and still live. Uh, uh, yeah. And I don't know. And then that's another thing. I think a website that you posted kind of made reference to this. It's like, I'm pretty sure that carrying more than like four harpoons is physically impossible. But yet, this this diver has just apparently millions. unlimited, unlimited. supply. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, the movie is kind of almost—it's just a suspense movie, you know. It's kind of right. that uh, building up, building up, building up to the climactic, where you actually get to see Jaws. Um, and this game is not really that. It's not really modeled after that at all. So. You know, Jaws is almost like a high budget. No, I'm not gonna say that. Never mind. That's a bad okay. point. I, I was gonna All make right. a bad point. All right. Don't but anyway, do, do you have any stories of uh, how you got this game? Michael's quest to find the cart. Does he find it? Well, what kind of cart? A cartridge, maybe. Oh, a cartridge. Probably a cartridge. Cartridge. Okay. I mean, they are they are talking about this game, so I'm assuming that he did find the cartridge. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, well, I had it as a child, and I lost it. But then I think the story behind this game is you and I hunted it down again. I mean, the big story is we had it, and we mm-hmm. played it when we were in, in school. I move away to college, I lose it, right? Mm-hmm. But then while we're in college, we're like, we think, you know, we got to play Jaws. Right. It's time to beat Jaws. You know, we're college kids now. We got plenty of time. We can Who figure needs to this study? Out. Yeah. It's time to figure this out. And the internet was around then, but for some reason, I guess we decided we didn't want to use the internet. Well, we thought it was something. We just thought, well, here's here's our here's my defense of our thinking that back then. We just thought that it was a game that was really hard, and you just had to keep shooting Jaws. Which is not the yeah, case. well, yeah, that's what I thought too. Yeah, mm-hmm. we thought that you just can, every time you saw Jaws, you you, would, you just had to shoot him and his power would go down. Mm-hmm. And so we would spend hours on the game because you don't, it's really hard to die but, unless mm-hmm. you're just not very good at it, right? Because you can dodge pretty easily. But the biggest deal is, you know, you just shoot him over and over again right. until his power goes down. But his power never really went down. But let's we'll talk about that during the gameplay. But okay. in college, we you and I mm-hmm. hunted down the game, kind of mm-hmm. like we did uh, Ghostbusters, right? Right, and uh, so we played it, and that's just kind of how that's how I got it. I'm sure that's that's probably how you got it too. We kind of had a shared copy, yeah. but I think the copy came with me. Yeah, because you I didn't think. Have any uh, I want to think I may still have my copy somewhere at my uh, dad's house. I don't know, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, it, and we got it again during college. We got frustrated with it and just gave up. 
and yep. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've revisited it since college. No. Until we went to play this game this week. Right, I haven't either, and I started playing it this week. And actually, last night, late last night, I beat it for the first time in my life. Oh, spoilers, you should save that for the uh, gameplay discussion. <laughs> well, well, let's go ahead and talk about the gameplay. All right, let's so, transform this into yeah. the gameplay discussion. Yeah. The game discussion. Right. I read it like the game, because that's a Triple H. That's how he says his name on the WWE. The game. I don't like that voice. I think the game no, discussion. It seems like you're trying too hard. Dave, I love you. Oh, well, okay. I love, I love you too, Tyler. Two, but dude, I still... two dudes in an NES. It's a NES. I, I, claim, I claim it for myself. <laughs> it's Okay. Time to discuss the game. <laughs> so last night, I got sat down and I was like, okay, I, I, it's really been, I, don't, I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to beat it. It was almost like, it was just, I wanted to keep it a pure thing. That, uh, you know, after I found out how to beat it this week, and then you told me, you had texted me, I was like, okay, I just beat it. It's actually not that hard. I was like, <laughs> I don't want to do that. It's almost like, you know, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to look behind the curtain. You don't want to, you don't want to know that Santa Claus is not real. You know? What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. You don't. He's not, he's real. Um, yeah. You don't want to find out those things. But, alas, I had to do it. And the ending is disappointing. A little bit. A little bit. You know, and- well, let me tell you, I, when I, I, I'm in the same boat as you, though, because now that I've beat it, I don't ever want to play it again. Like, it's not <laughs> a good enough game for me to ever want to play again. No. It's just not. But it was, it was enough of a game back when I couldn't beat it, that I had the desire to play it over and over again because I wanted to eventually beat it. Mm-hmm. Now that I've beat it, it's probably just going to collect dust because it's really not good enough for me to revisit again and again now that I've beat it. So I'm really disappointed because now I feel like I've just lost a game. Yeah, it's kind of funny because it's like you spend we spent hours, literally hours, on this game as children and, and when we were in college. And now, we, you know spent 30 minutes and we beat it and it's like <laughs> uh no but you know it is if you think about it in the time in a time where you didn't have the internet like a lot of these games we talk about with, with if you have the internet back in the 80s with these games coming out these games would have been terribly easy because right. part of the game what makes the games difficult is figuring out what you're supposed to do and if you just have a manual that tells you how to do it, then it makes the game really easy. So it, it takes away a lot of the innocence of games, you know? Or I guess innocence is not really the word I'm looking for. But, uh. Yeah. Well, uh, we should probably describe the game for anybody that's not played it yet, by the way. I yeah. mean, we're just kind of talking about how easy and how terrible it is, but <laughs> there's probably a few people out there that haven't even played it, mm-hmm. don't even know what it looks like. Basically... You start the game. You have a boat. Mm-hmm. It looks like a, it kind of looks like a sailboat, but I know it's not a sailboat. And you take, and it just starts you off at a dock, and just says, "Here you go." And so you go f- sailing on the water, and this mm-hmm. says you hit something. And I guess you fall out of your boat mm-hmm. in your scuba gear when you hit this something. And there's all these fish swimming around in the water, and yeah. you shoot the fish with your harpoon gun or your harpoon eyes. Apparently, it looks like you're shooting lasers out of your eyes. And, um, yeah, so they drop things like conch shells and crabs and stars. Well, the conch shells are money. That's what you use to upgrade your ship. And as you upgrade your ship, you're able to beat Jaws. But if you don't upgrade your ship, you Mm -hmm. can't beat Jaws. And you have to kind of go back and forth between these two docks, Mm -hmm. or these two ports, and collect conch shells and upgrade your ship until you're strong enough to beat Jaws. And then you stab him in the face, and the game's over. Right. But, I can make this game sound really good, too. I mean, I know that description probably didn't sound very good, but I can make it sound good if you want me to. I think you should. Okay. So, anybody who listens to that last part, ignore it if you Mm -hmm. want to play this game. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, take a game like Life Force or Gradius, right? 
mm -hmm. and put it in the ocean. So now you're a side scroller, side scrolling space shooter, but it's it's a side scrolling ocean shooter, all right? But then add an RPG overworld where you upgrade your ship. So you're in this RPG overworld and you randomly hit enemies just like in RPGs and you collect money and you upgrade your ship. And but then the the battle scenes are kind of like a life force side scrolling space shooter, but you don't even you don't go just left or you don't go just right. You can go all over the ocean in this little scene shooting stuff and collecting power-ups and money. And then you get to upgrade your ship until you're powerful enough to beat the boss, which is Jaws. Mm -hmm. Which is an epic battle where you have to stab him in the face. Yeah. In a first-person view, kind of like, you know, Doom or something. Yeah, and you, uh, you, uh, you also get to upgrade and drive a submarine. Right. And the submarine, the submarine shoots cannonballs. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's also a bonus stage. Oh man, this was my favorite stage. <laughs> it actually—that's my favorite part too. It's where you're in a like a Cessna airplane, mm -hmm. dropping cannonballs into the ocean to hit, trying jelly to hit jellyfish. Fish. Yeah, yeah. I, Did you ever, were, were you ever able to hit them all? Because you get a big bonus if you can hit them. All. I've hit them all before. Uh, this was, you know, and this is another thing that I had to talk about with this game that I actually love the music. And that, uh, when I was a, especially when I was a kid, the music when you're in the airplane and the bonus stage, I love that music. That, oh, I love that music too, because that music, uh, it's so it's such a departure from, it's, yeah, it's so happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, da 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 <laughs> It's just, it's awesome. <laughs> I'm fairly certain, though, if you tried to fly a Cessna with that many cannonballs, you're probably not going to get off the ground. Yeah, that's probably not the music you'd be listening to. <laughs> no. And the idea that you're flying around, you know, if I told, if, if I said, Mike, what are you doing this weekend? He's like, ah, oh, not much. And I was like, well, I'm going to go to the beach. You want to go to the beach with me? Uh, you want to go, uh, I'm uh, going to take my airplane and load it up with cannonballs. I'm going to drop it into the ocean and try to hit jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. That would I'd, be, I'd be down. Yeah. No, I'd be down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, but it's, that's that's really if you want to beat the game fast, the first time you get to the bonus stage, if you're able to hit all of the jellyfish, mm -hmm. that's how you're going to beat the game really fast. Because right. the object of the game is to get, I think, thirty thousand points, maybe. But I don't. You have to get so many points to get the submarine, right? And so you have to get so many points, or maybe it's money. I maybe it's the conch shells. It's the know. shell. You have to get so many. I think it's twenty it's the shells. shells. Maybe twenty shells. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we should have done some more research on no, this. But I... you have to get so many, so many things, and then you can get the submarine. And it's just kind of over in the corner of the map. Yeah, you pick up the submarine. It's twenty shells. It's twenty shells. You get the submarine. Okay. Yeah. But you get a bunch of shells for beating all of the jellyfish. Yeah. Like ten shells if you can beat all the jellyfish. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the submarine makes the game easy basically. Mm -hmm. Because then you've got much more powerful weapons. Jaws' power goes down mm -hmm. instead of just kind of staying stagnant. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you can't beat the game unless you get the submarine. It's just like, it's just, you can't get Jaws' power down. You know, like we were playing it and we just shoot him and shoot him and shoot him and it get, we'd get it almost like a quarter and mm -hmm. uh, uh, his life is all that's left and then he'd run away. And you then you find him again, and he'd be back up, and so it's like yeah, uh, he's like a Wolverine shark. He's got mm -hmm. regenerating life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, he should have given that some some of that to his kid, Baby Jaws. Which I don't know if the you know the game. I never read the manual. Do you have the manual? I don't have the manual. I, I don't know. Is I, I never. I was kind of confused on that. If that was ever supposed to be like. I know we always referred to it as Baby Jaws, hmm. and the websites refer to it as Baby Jaws. But was that supposed to be like Jaws' child, or was that going to be like... I don't know. Just another shark. I don't know. I guess it could have just been Jaws before breakfast or something. Yeah, could be. You know, you killed the Baby Jaws, and it's like, you know, Baby Jaws... It, He's easy to kill, but he's even harder than like the stingray. 
and right. you kill him, and all you get is one conch shell. It's, it's like pretty disappointing. Yeah, I can get a conch shell by shooting jellyfish. Right. I gotta battle you to get a conch shell. Yeah. No. That's another thing. Shooting jellyfish with a harpoon. That's an interesting dynamic. That's pretty intense. I mean, you could probably <laughs> sh you could probably use something else besides a harpoon. You probably just catch them in the net. But this guy, he just gonna uh, shoot him in the face with a harpoon. Although the game is probably more, uh, it is kind of like uh, it's, it's kind of real in that sense. Is when you do shoot the jellyfish, they disintegrate. Just go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's probably what actually happens if you shoot a jellyfish with a harpoon. Just right. Disintegrates. So. Yeah, so the end, the end part, mm -hmm. where you're on the, when you're driving the boat and you're trying to stab him, that mm -hmm. is probably what frustrated me more than anything, because he would swim left and right, mm -hmm. and you'd have to aim your boat, but I, for some reason I couldn't really figure it out at first, and if you don't stab him, you gotta basically start over. Yeah. He, his, his life is back to normal, and you just, well, you don't have to start over, you still have the submarine and whatnot, but you just have to do that part over again. I had to do that two or three times. Mm -hmm. I probably could have beat the game in 15 minutes if I didn't have to redo that part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and have, have you ever noticed that you're driving around in a sailboat with no sails? Yeah, I guess it's not a sailboat. It's probably like a... What do you call it? A schooner or something? I don't know. I thought it was a sailboat. Maybe, you know, sailboats have motors on it. Maybe this guy's just too lazy to sail. He's just like, I'm just gonna use the I'm just gonna use the engine. Yeah. Yeah. He's not very uh, environmental friendly. No. He likes to just no. burn up gas. Moving on. Richard Dreyfus. I guess this is Richard Dreyfus driving his boat. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Didn't he quit acting? He quit acting at some point. I guess. I haven't seen him in any I think he did like a really bad movie one time and then just quit. He said, I'm done. Mm. I wish all that. I don't know. Look. Yeah. Look it up. Look it up. I'll look it up. Okay, so here, here's my biggest qualm about this game. Because we're actually kind of gushing over this game a little bit. It seems like we both are talking about all the great things we love about it. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing to me about the game and the reason why I'll probably never play it again is it's really boring. If yeah. you don't beat it quickly. If you can beat it in 10, 15 minutes, that's fine. It's good. It's easy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fun. But if you, if for some reason you can't, it's like you're having trouble getting the shells or something, it gets really boring really fast. Yeah. I mean, you're just doing the same thing in the same environment. Mm -hmm. uh, the map that you're going between the ports is really small. You're just kind of doing the back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, I don't know. It's just... It's just the same thing. And the music, as much as I love the music, you hear it over and over and over again. Yeah. It's just the same thing. And the bonus music, the, maybe the reason I like the bonus music so much is because you don't hear it as much. So I'm really excited when I get to hear something different. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't beat the game, it is a boring game. Um, it's just, I guess for most of my childhood, it was just like, okay, I'm going to try to play this game, try to beat it play for a little while and I'm like uh, forget it <laughs> you know well yeah you get bored that's what it is you, mm -hmm. you can it, it, you, it's not really hard right but you just get bored with it mm -hmm. that's just what happens that's why that's why probably why I never beat it because I never spent the time to figure out what to do because it was just so boring right but I mean the graphics are good I mean I mean they're on par with most NES games I think they look pretty good the environments look cool yeah I, the, yeah, uh, and the mu the music's really good, even though you have to hear some of the same stuff over and over again. Although I would say, if I if if they could have done this game better, if they could have like added things to this game, I mean they could add a lot to this game. Again, LGN kind of what we were talking about earlier probably was more interested in just getting this game out and capitalizing on the Jaws name more than they were interested in making a good game. But uh, you know, one thing that I find, they probably, I would have liked to see more bad guys, not just a stingray and a jellyfish over and over again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
made some of them a little tougher. You know, you basically got Stingray, a Jellyfish, Baby Jaws, and Jaws. That's it. And right. you could have made the game a little more dynamic. You could have made it a little better if you just added a few sea creatures, a few more sea creatures. Um, well, I mean, you're already taking a lot of liberties with the license to even be able to make a game about this movie. Because mm-hmm. there's really only one action scene in the movie, right? Mm-hmm. So you're going to have to take some liberties. Why not just take a bunch more liberties? Turn it into, like, say, keep the game the same, right? Mm-hmm. But then once you get the submarine, turn it into a full-on space shooter where you have to go through a level. Like, you stay in the submarine and go through all the whole entire level to get to Jaws. Yeah. Then you've beat Jaws or something. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, I know. I agree. I, it just seems like... Uh some lazy development and I don't know you know I don't play a lot of video games today you know one of the reasons why we do this podcast is we're trying to bring back the old old style games because I don't know I, we've talked about this a lot about new style games but I think that you don't have as much of that just throwing it together to try to get it out there and capitalize on something I don't know it just seems like maybe that's Maybe that's part technology. The technology has gotten so 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 much better that we're able to create games more easily uh, than we were back then. But um, if they spent more than forty five days making this game, I would be disappointed because yeah. it really is it it really is just thrown together. <laughs> I mean, it's almost yeah, it kind of re- it almost seems like a a really old school arcade game mm-hmm. instead of an NES game. It seems like something made to take quarters away from you back in the early eighties, yeah. late seventies. You know what yeah, I mean? It's right. it's like a it's like a Pac Man. It's designed to take away your quarters. Mm-hmm. But when you're playing it on a home console like the NES, there's you don't want that. You know, you want something right. else. And we've also talked. You know, it, it, I draw similarities to this game and the game we talked about earlier, and I kind of mentioned this earlier in the show. And that's Ghostbusters, which, you know, Ghostbusters, while we love David Crane, was, eh, it seemed like it was kind of thrown together, you know? Uh, it wasn't a very difficult game. Well, the stairs were impossibly difficult, but it did, it, it, you can't, you can tell they didn't spend a whole lot of time making the game. Mm-hmm. And Jaws. Well, I still, I will say that I enjoy Ghostbusters more than Jaws. Really? I, I can still go back and play Ghostbusters until I get to the stairs, mm-hmm. and then I quit playing. I quit playing once I get to the stairs, because I, I don't like the stairs, because they're too hard. But right. I can still go back and play Ghostbusters on occasion, play it until I get to the stairs, and then I just quit. I, I don't know. It doesn't take that long. It's just a quick, easy... I, and I think it's fun to do that. Well, in all honesty, I mean, to be honest, I'd probably play both of these games. I mean, you know, we're kind of bashing Jaws, but I'd probably pick it up and play it every now and then. But it's certainly not a game that I would pick up and play a, a lot, like Super Mario Bros. I can pick that up any right. day and say, oh man, you know, that's just an awesome game to pick up and play. Uh, mm-hmm. Or, you know, a lot of the other games you've got, like Contra, or Metro, you know, those are games that you're going to go back to a lot. This game, right. I'd go back to, but it's going to be once every blue moon. Yeah. So. Blue moon. Oh, boy. Okay, sorry. Retrofitted trophies. Hey, you know, Richard, to, to mention you asked about Richard Dreyfus. Richard Dreyfus is still acting. Oh, okay. He's been in a lot of stuff. Uh, he's he's uh, working on a bunch of movies right now. Uh, was he in Parenthood? I feel like he was in Parenthood. He was in Parenthood. The, the TV show. Yes. Okay, so ne- never mind. He was also... Um, there was another one famous... So, uh, yeah, he he's been in it, Weeds, the television show Weeds. He was in the movie W. I never saw that movie. It was made by Oliver Stone, but uh, he was he was Dick Cheney in that movie. Really? Yeah. Uh, Welcome everybody to the Richard Dreyfus podcast. Hey, two dudes talk about Richard Dreyfus. Yeah. Yeah. But he's he's working. He's still working. Still working on new movies. They should do a new Jaws. They're redoing everything else. Spielberg yeah. can just redo Jaws. Yeah, I'd be down for that. 
Make it better. But keep it like a keep it like a suspenseful movie. Don't make it into like a monster movie or something. What's funny about Jaws is it's a it's 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 a horror movie, but it's rated PG. Mm-hmm. Like how many horror yeah. movies are actually rated PG? Well, probably a lot made them back in nineteen seventy five. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Retrofitted trophies. This is the segment that. Oh, that's when they stole from us. That, yeah, they stole okay. from us. But <laughs> Michael apologized for it. So okay, it's fine. So I won't. Say. All forgiven. Yeah, we're not well, very I, we're not very litigious I podcasters. Will, <laughs> I will call off my trope of Apple like lawyers. <laughs> so yeah. Do you have any trophies? Okay, I'll, I will say you mentioned one to me before the show mm-hmm. that I kind of put the kibosh on because yeah. our buddies at Tadpog stole it from you. Although you you haven't listened to the Jaws episode of Tadpog, right. so it's it's not really. F- it's not really fair for me to put the kibosh on it. So I'm going to go ahead and change my mind and say that you can do it. Well, my the, my trophy was the Crocodile Hunter trophy. And it's not really a trophy to, that you want to achieve, but it's getting killed by a stingray. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's too soon? Too soon, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We don't care. <laughs> I mean, we care about the Crocodile Hunter. And we're just really sorry that that happened to him. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> Mike's just heartless over here. I came off. Yeah. I came off. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> the list, the the D padders know what I meant. Mm, mm-hmm. We don't think it's too soon, or else we wouldn't say it. Right. All right. Anyways, you got a, you got one. Yeah, I got one. It's called the Conk Exchange. Uh-huh. Let's collect twenty shells. Okay. The Conk Exchange. I was trying to make it sound like the Stock Exchange, but. I don't know. I'd have to probably use a different language to say conk. Well, my my next trophy was you kind of ruined it by saying that it's not a sailboat. But I'm going to go with it is a sailboat. And okay. my uh, next trophy is the Christopher Cross Oh, uh, I knew trophy. that was coming. <laughs> and that is being able to sail or, or ride around in the boat for three minutes without hitting something. Uh, I think I that's probably that's impossible. Possible. Yeah, it's probably impossible. But, yeah. Do you want to? For those who don't know Christopher Cross, you care to sing a bar for us? Uh, sailing takes me way to where I've always. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's nice. Yeah. Sailing <laughs> is a, a song by Christopher Cross. I think it, it's probably from the '80s as well. Yeah, I think it is. '80s, early '90s. Yeah. So. All right, I've got another one called James Cameron would be impressed. Oh yeah, and that is uh, get the submarine. Nice, I like that one. I like that one. Um, I had another one. I don't remember. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, my next trophy is I can't beat you, but I'll punch your kid, and that's killing baby <laughs> Jaws in front of Jaws. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh. All right, I just had one more. It's called Why, and that is uh, screw up the stabbing part five times. Oh man! Well, like why is this so frustrating? My last trophy is the deadliest catch trophy, and that is uh, playing Jaws in the shallow area and not dying. Ooh, it's very difficult. It really, it it, difficult. it's really difficult when you get in the shallow area with Jaws and baby Jaws shows up. That's just about impossible. Mm. Yeah, to that's, that's that. pretty hard. Yeah. That's why I try to stay out of the shallow area mm-hmm. when I fight Jaws. You know, it's kind of funny. It's like in every, uh, it's, it's you know, don't go to the deep water. You know, it's kind of what Jaws was, you know, everything was about. Deep water, don't go to the deep water, don't go to the deep end. But in this game, don't go to the shallow end. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But Tom Arnold would be impressed if you, if you were able to beat baby jaws and survive um, big jaws and shower yeah he would he would I th- and I think Putin pretty much rejoices every time people play this game because jaws especially when people play it and don't know what they're doing because mm-hmm. then they're just dying all the time getting frustrated mm-hmm. so P- Putin's over there in Russia like Ooh. seems like Putin would love the idea of a giant shark that uh, mm-hmm. you can't beat. Yeah, yeah, he would. You know, you can't beat it by conventional means. Yeah. Right. 
going back to the gameplay for just a second, that last part where you stab Jaws in the face, uh-huh. and, and the end being so disappointing. Like, you know, Jaws comes up out of the water and he spins. You stab him in the face. And then, there's, like, it's not really that, it's like really anticlimactic. It's, he just drops from the top of the water. It just, he just sinks. <laughs> and then you fly off in a plane. And it says well, the it's end. The, it's the cannonball plane. Yeah. So. Yeah. The end. Mm-hmm. And then another thing about the gameplay. I know we're, I'm kind of going back. I'm sorry. But there's another that's thing right. I wanted that's to right. mention. We're just really unorganized. That's all. And I, I'm getting hives over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, uh, is when you're in the boat, you know, before... Uh, uh, when you hit something and then, you know, you're in the boat for a minute before, you know, something hits you and you get in the water. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, when you're throwing the cannonballs, it's not like, it's not like you're shooting cannonballs. It's just like somebody's just kind of tossing them over, overboard. Yeah. There's no real force behind it. It's just like there's some guy up there. Just, uh, huh, huh. <laughs> <laughs> just a really strong guy. Yeah. Like an Arnold Schwarzenegger guy up there. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. They should make the, the a, a Jaws movie based off the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Game rating. And not a lot I could do with that. That's that's the that's the rating for the game. That's what it is. The game rating. What do you think they do in that segment? Uh, rate rate the games. And each other's performances. All of the games? All, all of the game. Anything that is a game, mm-hmm. they rate it. All right, how about a, how about a rating? You want to give it a rating? Sure. Do uh, you want me to pick a weird rating like usual, or do you want to come up with one? No. I've got, I've got one in my mind. Let's go, let, let's go with yours. Okay, I want, to, I want us to give it a rating of an item of scuba gear. Some item of scuba gear. Okay. Okay. Hmm. You want to go first? You want me to go? Uh, I'm going to have to think about that for a minute. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with the snorkel. Mm-hmm. Because when you're, so. when you're scuba diving, the snorkel is not really necessary. And, but it's, it's kind of neat to have if you want to do some top water. Uh, stuff where you go deep. Mm-hmm. So yeah. this game is kind of like it's not necessary, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know it's kind of fun to have if you, you know, spent money on it or just happen to find it. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I'm going to give it the wetsuit mm-hmm. because I feel like a wetsuit to to somebody who doesn't really know how to use one or how to put one on is probably really hard to put on because oh, they're so man. tight. You know, but once you put one on a bunch and you really know what you're doing, it's probably really easy to put a wetsuit on. Mm-hmm. Which I think describes this game well. Exactly, that's a good one. I like that. All right, we got the we got some feedback. Yeah, let's do. We got some iTunes feedback. I'm looking forward to this section. Uh, yeah, we've got uh, we've got actually three new ratings on iTunes. And sandwiched in between two five star ratings is a two star. Ah, yeah, but it's okay. We'll we'll do the we'll sandwich it that way. It sounds better. Okay. Because we'll okay. So let's we'll start with a five. All right. The five star is from Chef Tyrone. And it says, "I love the discussion, the segments, and the trivia. I wish there was more cursing." But I understand when you got to keep it clean. <laughs> Tropic Kappa. Oh, never mind. And that's one of the Tadpog guys, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> wish there were more. Wish there was more cursing. All right. That's an interesting Sorry. request. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we can follow through with that one. All right, the two star from Retro Digital Law or LA. Well, it's not capitalized. I'm assuming it's Law. Uh, suspect some heavy padding on reviews. Can deal with hit or miss trivia, um um ums before every other word because I like hearing fellow fans talk about classics. But the echo makes this intolerable in headphones. Please fix this. So, a c- 
couple of things on this. He's right about the Echo. I really have no idea what to do about the Echo. I've tried to fix it over and over again. I guess we're just going to get new computers and new microphones, but that that costs more money than we're willing to put forth. So if it's if the Echo stays and I can't get it fixed, then I'm sorry to all the listeners that can't deal with it. The ums, yeah, I do um a lot. I'm sorry. Well, I don't I don't gather my thoughts really well. I don't have a script. I just try to go off the top of my head, so I um a lot. Sorry. But you can deal with that and so can everybody else, hopefully. I don't feel like I um that much, but maybe well, I Well, maybe I am a lot. I think I am a lot, but that's okay. Okay. I'm and then hit or miss trivia. We've had a lot of people call us out on our hit or miss trivia. I really don't feel like it's hit or miss, but we do just pull it from the internet, so yeah. I guess and again, I stress the fact if you find an in- something incorrect or you know something about a game that you want to say, hey, you didn't mention this and this is really important to the game, Mm-hmm. Shoot us an email. Shoot us, you know, it's, uh, what what's our email, Mike? NESdudes.com. Oh, no, NESdudes.com is our website. NESdudes at Outlook.com. Yeah. That's our email. Shoot us an email. Put it on Facebook. Something. We'll we'll shut you out on the show. If we, if yeah, we, we've said that before. Mm-hmm. We've said that before. Nobody sent us anything, so we're just assuming everything we say is correct. Right. Yeah. So. And then the heavy padding... Uh, that I really I don't you, of course we ask our friends to give us reviews but we ask them to listen to it first so it's not really mm-hmm. I mean I guess it's padding because our friends are probably going to give us better reviews but I looked through the list I really did because I was worried that most of the people on the list may have been our friends we've got about 34 reviews mm-hmm. or something and at least half of them I have no clue who they are so yeah. it's not really padding I don't feel like and I did review us myself okay I'm sorry but in the beginning, I wanted to help get our name out there. I did, in our review, mention that I'm a part of the show, though. Yeah. So I wanted everybody... In the review, it says, I'm a part of the show, but I think we do a good job. Here's my review of our show. So. And I want to... You say that uh, you don't recognize half of them, but the uh, m- the majority of the other half, it's not like our best friends are reviewing us, because our best friends don't even listen to the no. show. It's like no, it's, our best friends don't even listen to the show. They probably give us one stars, but, but uh, the, it's it's fellow podcasters. What it is that we've asked uh, that to have give us that have listened to the show, and it's people right, that, that have listened to the show have become friends or you know kind of like uh, internet buddies, like Eric Purcell or Aaron Hickman. You know these guys that have come to know us through the show. You know it's not like right. we've become buddies with these guys. You know we we were buddies with these guys. We told them to go on there give us five star reviews we know these guys because of the show they've come to us because exactly yeah because of the show and then we ask them to if they wouldn't mind giving us a review and we ask them for an honest review yeah absolutely we always ask for honest reviews if you're going to give us a review don't just give us a five star because we like five stars of course we love five stars but (laughs) you know be honest and i i appreciate the two star i'm not like i'm not going to Mm-hmm. get mad about it because most of the stuff he brings up are true we do say a lot of ums and there is an echo that I just have not been able to figure out but how about another five star let's right. bring the mood up alright Root 21 says I started listening a few weeks ago and I have to say it was a little rocky at first but you guys have come a long way from talking to a soundboard Mario <laughs> to real guests <laughs> Yeah. I'm really liking the podcast, so keep up the good work, and I'm looking forward to next week. So thank you, dude. I think me and you enjoy the uh, the soundboard Mario than anyone else. I think I yeah. think we think it's hilarious, <laughs> but everybody else just thinks it's annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have used him twice now. But on next week's show, Mario's coming back. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. We're not bringing Mario. We might get Luigi next week. You never know. Hey. You never know. Soundboard Luigi. Yeah. Soundboard Yoshi. Who knows? Yeah, Yoshi's just eating eggs. Yeah. Oh, pooping out eggs. I think. He oh yeah, eggs. pooping eggs. Yeah. He eats everything. Okay. All right. I uh, speaking of iTunes reviews, we didn't give our review winners last week. I guess you could consider this padding too, because we're offering <laughs> uh, a, a reward for a review, but it doesn't have to be a five star. But anyways, I randomly picked three names. I'm going to call them out on the show. If any of these iTunes usernames are you, listener, or D-Patter, if you are a D-Patter who has this iTunes username, then send us an email at nestdudes at outlook.com, and I will send you a list of games that you can pick from. All right? 
First winner is Ford Boy 81. Congratulations, Ford Boy. And the second winner is Fish Lips J. Awesome name. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. And then the third winner is <clears throat> Awesome Ginger Beard. <laughs> Another great name. Another great name. Well, they're all really good names, but yeah, Awesome Ginger Beard. So you three, if if you want to send us an email, nesdudes at outlook dot com, I will send you a games list, and you can have a game. So, and thank you for your review. I don't know, I don't know if you're all five stars. I don't know if you're fives and fours or. We didn't really have much twos other than Retro Digital Law, but Retro Digital Law came in after the deadline, so he wasn't eligible. Okay. Anyways, you want to do just a let's just do just a quick little spout of our iTunes or our Facebook feedback because we got a lot of feedback on Facebook. Okay. And I like our our Facebook friends. Uh, Tom Sherlock says, "Oh no, oh my dear no! I remember this game not being a good." One. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the No Swear Gamer says nothing says Jaws like air bombing jellyfish and collecting shells. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Uh, Jay Jorgensen says, "Oh yes, one of LGN's classic games. I'm pretty sure I would have had made some changes to this game by burying all copies of it next to the Atari ET." <laughs> <laughs> well, he had a he had a dramatic pause in there that I screwed mm-hmm. up. So hang on, hang on. I, I'm sure I would have made some changes to this game by burying all copies <laughs> of it next to Atari ZT. Yeah. Okay. Um, see, Scott Davies says, "What sort of game is it? I hadn't heard of it before." I think he's being sarcastic. I like the accent. I hope he's you being sarcastic. I like yeah the accent. Yeah. But in the if if you haven't played it, then. Uh... Maybe we then maybe we described it. it well enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Aaron Hickman says it's a game where you shoot fish in the face, and Jaws shows up to ruin your day. It's pretty accurate there. Yep. And Eric Purr, Purr so, says it's a game where you're going to need a bigger boat. Yep. I was waiting on somebody. I thought I was hoping it would be you, not me. But it was neither of us. It was actually Eric. Yeah. So thank you, Eric, for that. Please share. bigger boat. <laughs> okay all right so it, tell, tell them our stuff all right well check us out on nesdudes.com you can listen to all the podcasts there uh you can uh, read little tidbits that we write and check out all the trophies and, and things from shows that we've talked about uh you can check us out on facebook twitter uh follow us like us um and uh, uh anything like again email us if you uh, uh, want to add something to something we've talked about or, or tell us something, nesdudes at outlook.com. And, uh, yeah, and also remember to check out everybody else on the, the Retro Junkies. Um, there are a lot of good podcasts on there. So uh, Turtle Flakes, just uh, the Super Show, not to men- just to mention a few. Uh, so Just to mention Rob's. Podcast. Oh, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I just also want to say that the website I just redesigned it, and it looks mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. amazing. It really yeah. looks amazing, especially if you look on the computer. It looks really cool on the computer, but it's also now optimized for all devices. So if you go on the computer, it looks one way. If you go on your tablet, it looks one way. You go on your phone, it looks one way. All optimized for each device. Mm-hmm. The computer's the best because it's got a really cool uh, NES controller on it but it's whatever yeah awesome all right here comes the noises and the sounds and the bleeps and the bloops and the music for next week thank you bye bye